I V M. There's a quick survey to fill out on ivmpodcast.com slash survey. It lets us know a little bit more about who's listening to us. And you know what? We're going to do a few prizes. So, I mean, like, we'll do a random drawing of, like, maybe 10 people, and we'll send you all some swag. Remember, that's ivmpodcast.com slash survey, where you can fill out the survey. All right, hello, welcome to Football Total. Aaj hamare yaha ghar ki Lakshmi aayi hai. <laughs> Tanuj, how are you? Hello, ji, hello. <laughs> I'm doing good. Like, I'm a bit sad, but we can get to that later on in the show. We'll get to that. And I hope you're not sad because, like, our icon, Chris Rock, <laughs> had to face humiliation. <laughs> Yeah, but he got a public apology also on Instagram. Yeah, right. Come on, what bullshit. I'm just so happy Chris Rock is going on tour from next month onwards. He should just keep quiet till then and then he should have a 15 minute set. Out. <laughs> just destroying yeah, this piece of him. shit, Will Smith. Anyway, uh, Yash, what's up? Yo, how are you? How are you? I'm good, I'm good. So, Oscar viewing has increased 56% this year as compared to last year. Is this what our society has come down to? Now we need to see people being beaten up. Yes. Yeah, I I think it is abundantly clear. I I think they should have uh, introduced more of this rather than less. (laughs) Oh, you mean like you don't know who is going to slap who? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, uh, why restrict ourselves to like two black men fighting? This is such a racist trope there should have been more inclusivity in the slapping business but yeah, also what? like some quarters of society that are saying this never used to happen when a white guy would host this that is, is probably culture. true but here's a question baru what if brad pitt had slapped chris rock <laughs> would he have been given a no, standing ovation at best actor if, if brad pitt had slapped not chris rock but the rock that would have been something Oh, oh yeah, I saw that argument also. Will Smith beat yeah. up Chris Rock, but what if Jason Momoa or The Rock were hosting? <laughs> he think he would have had the balls to go up and beat them. But he's an emotional yeah, he guy. Yes. Really punching down. No? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's an emotional guy. Did you buy that argument? Yeah, he felt quite emotional to see his wife not being amused at uh, the joke. Before that, he was showing his emotions by laughing at the joke. So. Yeah, he's yeah. quite an emotional guy, I'd say. <laughs> he showed his range, acting range, yeah. all the emotions. Why, why I bring up this Chris Rock episode is, you know, he's not the only famous person to be humiliated in public mm. in the last three days. Yesterday, I think yesterday, Harry Maguire was booed at Wembley. Yash, what is yeah. going on? Why was he booed in England colours? I don't know. This is some weird relationship the Wembley crowd has to Manchester United players because this is not the, this has not happened it for the first time. Uh, I think two thousand one or sometime this had they booed Harry and, Maguire at the age of three. <laughs> no, no. That time I think England had like five Manchester United players, and but that was at the peak of the Arsenal United rivalry. So it was assumed that they were all Arsenal fans at Wembley booing the United players. But uh, yeah, I mean I. Partially tend to agree with what Jimmy Carragher has tweeted. He said that, oh, you if, if you're a money-paying fan, then you're allowed to do, uh, you know, uh, an innocuous thing like just booing a player. So, suck it up. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's not like, you know, 90,000 crowd went to the stage and said, I didn't, you insulted my wife and slapped <laughs> Harry Maguire. <laughs> Wait, but what if that is the half you agreed with what Jamie Carragher said, what's the second half you disagreed with? No, I, I simply disagreed with the fact that uh, I think Harry Maguire for England has been very good. He's played in two tournaments in which England have done well, given how England generally do in tournaments. And he's been okay for England. So, I, I really don't see like well, what, what was the cause for this booing. Yeah. But Baru, are you not happy? Saka is off the boo list now. He can miss as many penalties he wants. Harry Maguire is the lightning rod of England. He will get booed irrespective of who screws up. <laughs> but yeah, I think uh, there were also articles about how Saka's current form is because of all that booing and, you know, <laughs> it made him a stronger person and it improved his personality <laughs> and strengthened him. And from summer till now, he's like just a different player. 
Ladies and gentlemen, at football, what will be finally discovered? Racism works. <laughs> <laughs> But Why it didn't. Only the black crowd in Wembley was booing Harry Maguire. Then no, it that's wouldn't not work if the white guys are doing it. Right? No, the white guys don't give a shit. They don't improve. <laughs> And Rashford, yeah. because he's beyond football. <laughs> like why? Yeah, if green, that, if that's the beyond football, it's only Greenwood right now, no? <laughs> beyond football. Dude, but if this is the argument that Saka has improved after the booing, what happened to Rashford? <laughs> why hasn't he improved? God knows. I mean, he he has more important things like feeding kids and you know confronting fans about their opinions and shit, stuff like that. I guess. <laughs> and apologizing on Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> man. If Rashford was an Indian football player, he would just be doing longer. He won't even turn up for <laughs> matches. We have so many poor kids here. Ah, Rashvinder. <laughs> Why Rashvinder? Why Punjabi? Because longer. <laughs> Why longer is open for all. Anyway, let's get to the more important. I haven't seen any Our football. At, I I've seen like fifteen minutes of football, literally. Where North Macedonia scored a goal against Portugal, and but let before we get to that, let's talk about Nigeria. Tanuj, since 2006, the staple in World Cup. Pele said Nigeria is going to win a World Cup in 1998 or something, and now they are out of the tournament. Like, what is going on? Who is going to make designer jerseys? <laughs> well, I think uh, Nigeria did perform on the pitch last night, but it wasn't the playing eleven. It was the rest of the stadium. <laughs> who went ahead and destroyed half of the stadium to show their anger but yeah it's it's a pity because argentina versus nigeria always used to be a staple in every other world cup yeah it's and like the arsenal bayern won. munich of world cups <laughs> yeah they always would win the first half trophy like arsenal and then argentina would proceed to dismantle them in the second half but it's it's sad i mean nigeria used to oh, tanuj is so disappointed yes that he just houses. they used to be one of the powerhouses once they got through the age group things you know i mean because nigeria would never get to play in the correct age group because of all the doping and the age uh, fudging that they do yeah. but uh, yeah this time it finally showed up like all that corruption and the non development of the domestic league people becoming too uh, easy on themselves just and too dependent on john obi mikel the minute he's out of the yeah. team look what happened <laughs> Yeah, well, that is how it is. I mean, they performed pretty well in the uh, Olympics. I think last. Uske baad, it's just been downhill. Mostly goalless draws and uh, one goal draws, which is something even France do. But France ultimately seem to to seem to win the right matches and just make it through. Correct. Yes, our friend Baru is so sad by not even watching one minute of Nigerian football. So imagine people who actually saw the game. You think the fans' reaction is justified? Would Jamie Carragher also like to tweet about if you're a ticket-paying fan, you should be able to take some memorabilia from the stadium back home? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's from Liverpool, so I'm sure he approves of such activities. So, <laughs> <laughs> as long as you don't spit on the players, he's fine. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, forget Nigeria is gone. I don't even know who the African qualifiers are. But while during this podcast, we'll probably Google. Ah, uh, let's Ghana, talk about Ghana, Senegal, or two. Yeah, let's Big talk ones. about uh, Italy versus North Macedonia. Yes, oh, what the hell, man? Italy, how many chances do they need? This is like self-inflicted injury. I think there's some curse over Italy and World Cups, man. Since they won the World Cup in 2006, they've been terrible at the World Cups. I think. Uh, 2014 they didn't qualify or 2018 so actually the last one they didn't qualify right <laughs> and they haven't qualified for this one as well despite being european champions it's it's quite shambolic and uh, i think uh, their defense is aging and uh, mancini had sort of patched the team together well in 2000 and so he couldn't yeah, patch 2021, the team for, but he couldn't patch the team for three more games but i mean having said that the north macedonia goal was so good man yeah it was incredible he's going to live uh, I mean that goal is going to be played in North Macedonia for like 50 years in the future. No, Russia is going to invade it in like 4 years. <laughs> What 50 are you talking about? <laughs> He will be an outpost for Putin <laughs> in North Russia like upper Jugo and lower Verli. <laughs> Yeah, but all in all Portugal the team you supported over the last 5 days has gone through mm-hmm. 
and That's you true. wrote on whatsapp that you know cristiano is being given the credit for bruno's goals explain yourself my friend baru i didn't write that that was no kumar. you wrote it <laughs> yes has no idea what right. yes has no kumar, idea that was kumar that was kumar kanav you're confusing me with a former member of this podcast <laughs> <laughs> Oh no yeah but was Ronaldo any good in the game we should get the logo change uh, yeah i mean no he lost the ball and all as usual but uh, he he <laughs> did provide the assist for bruno in the first goal which opened the scoring and uh, that was that was pretty vital i mean i could see how uh, north macedonia despite being a small club managed to hold italy because they work hard they 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 were intense and they were not allowing uh, players like bernardo and cancelo and the usual high quality portuguese crowd to really get on top of them until they made like a minor error to get the ball to ronaldo ronaldo ran through put a yeah. passed it to the legs of one of defenders and bruno did the rest bruno also scored the other goal so he had a good night yeah but North i mean macedonia is so small that yash is not even calling them a country he just called them a club <laughs> <laughs> they they so small for a club it's like four streets <laughs> <laughs> I mean I'm sure their MP cannot complain about a factory in their country because that would occupy too much space <laughs> but baru so are we left with now north macedonian players being kicked out of italy on drug charges <laughs> that's the only thing left for those players now in their careers ah matta how can this guy is gogoran pandey still playing in italy no no he's done he may be but he's not with the north macedonian team so he's just too old now okay so do we have the final list for world cup friends because uh, i me and my dear friend tanuj have to plan this epic trip supposedly and so do we know when is the draw what is the spot what is going on and the who are the teams we want to support the list is more or less there i think only asia and that uh, that their qualifier against north america is left but uh, of course the the uh, the draws haven't happened so we don't know yet about scheduling no oh, okay when is the world cup november there's only yep there's still time i think there's only one spot left in europe uh we already that's have... because of the war ukraine mm-hmm. haven't oh, yeah <laughs> yeah but i don't think ukraine should qualify yeah i think daily mirror or somebody said that ukraine should be given that spot and wales should just let it go what they're so anti scotland and wales the two neighbors the two big teams that they yeah it's two very stay home dude <laughs> oh shit Wait, oh, that way england should give up its spot to india for the atrocities they committed on yeah. us no <laughs> obviously but they'll have to give it to the winner of the commonwealth games back Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we, I don't think we can win. That Australia, they were already qualified. Yeah, so Australia don't need that. They're the privileged. So here's a question, Yash. If England, out of the goodness of their heart, because they're white people, they're mm. in general good people, uh, out of the goodness of their heart, if they decide to give up the spot for World Cup, but since they've already divided our country to india and pakistan they said there should be a one off match between india and pakistan and the winner will get to play the world cup you think our dear leader and our government will allow india playing pakistan of course not i mean why what this? we're giving up a fucking world cup squad because <laughs> Dude, it's, it's because <laughs> yeah i mean kisi ko pata nahi chalega to kya farak padega I don't think they'll anybody will stop it. They'll just add it to that intercontinental cup that happens in Andheri anyway. So <laughs> in Andheri, <laughs> what's happening in Andheri? Why are we playing intercontinental tournaments? We lost to Guam. <laughs> yeah, but that was actually a part of the World Cup qualification, right? Unlike this friendly tournament India has created for itself, where it calls <laughs> Puerto Rico and New Zealand. Baru, which is a bigger and country Canada. by in area, North Macedonia or Guam? <laughs> North Macedonia, obviously. Easily. I don't Guam think so. Outpost, right? Dude, what is North Macedonia? Are you adding the maritime borders to Guam or something? <laughs> Then there'll be like one nautical mile. Wait, <laughs> let me Google this. Guam, Guam Island. <laughs> Google calls it Guam Island. All right. Their population is one point six nine lakhs, and area is twenty five thousand for North Macedonia kilometers. Oh. North Macedonia population is twenty lakhs. Okay, <laughs> so 
by wow. a factor of 20 years 550 square kilometers <laughs> all right uh yes you also said there are some changes to the champions league format what is this what are the changes tell us yeah yeah so i think we spoke about some of them uh, but there is a lot of outrage on online like people don't aren't are saying that they don't understand the swiss model and everything what is the swiss I, I model No, I think it's pretty easy. So you remember last season when um, uh, your team unexpectedly ended up on the top of the table, and you recycled that old "stop the count" joke. My team? You mean Newcastle? Any team, any team in football in general. Whenever your team was on the top of the table, that same "stop the count" joke from the 2020 elections, US election was being. Oh yeah, in. yeah. Baru you know post. So, Baru posted before every season begins. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so yeah, what so, is so so there are going to be thirty six teams in the Champions League, and after ten games, ten uh, league matches, UEFA is going to stop the count. Really? And the tables, yeah, the tables going to be fixed there, and uh, the top eight top eight teams go through to the quarters, and uh, the following following what sixteen teams so play for the place in, for the quarters. There's a playoff for the quarterfinals. That's that's about it. And what about and, the rest? Uh, The rest get knocked out, no? So they go to Europa and stuff like that? No, no, I, I know. I think that's not gonna happen. Oh, because there are already way too many matches happening. So, uh, or at least this this particular update uh, did was silent about it. And uh, so, what is so hard to understand? Just stop. Oh, wait. But then I think what fans are outraging, and especially I'm sure this is like mm-hmm. a bunch of Chelsea fans and United fans that how many mm-hmm. they will play make us play against Real Madrid, Juventus, all the tough guys, and make us be Haifa. <laughs> we'll play the easy ones and get into top eight. No, no, no. That's not. I mean, that they, they've clearly mentioned that there's going to be seedings and there's going to be an even spread of those ten matches between uh, the various seeds. Can we be a little? So United are probably. Going to put a petition that they don't want to face young boys or FC Basel. These are the so five of those games and five games against the Barca's and AC Milan's and blah blah. So yeah, but given how the anyway, the, the controversial part of it was that uh, there are four more teams going to be added right now. There are thirty-two teams in the Champions League, and so out of those four more teams, two straight away go to the qualifiers. So basically, there's a champion stream and there's a Non-champion stream, right? In qual in qualifiers for the last decade. That's yeah, but people teams. should be happy that Russia and Ukraine war is happening because there'll be no yeah, Ukrainian and, teams, no Russian teams. So, but who knows? By twenty twenty four, maybe there'll be one more country out of all this. <laughs> oh God! Donbas. <laughs> like what? Donbas. <laughs> yeah. See, and uh, so yeah, so the controversial bit is that there are gonna there are two positions for. Teams that have done well in the last five years and who have missed out through automatic qualification. Oh. So it's like a back room, uh, like a backdoor wild card kind of a thing. And but what they have modified this time is that those teams have to finish exactly one spot below the automatic qualification. So uh, let's say whoever Liverpool does not make it, they cannot finish whatever eighth, like they did under. Whoever Benitez, Benitez, or whoever they finish eighth, but simply because they won the Champions League four years back, they can't uh, qualify. Okay, let me simplify whatever you have said. So there is a new system; it's very complicated and all of that. But Baru, all it means is Arsenal is going to play Bayern Munich next season. That's all it means. As champions of Don Bas. <laughs> oh, dude! I hope is not. Is there going to be an Arsenal from there? Okay. No. What the Arsenal? No. It's just Arsenal. No. The Arsenal is England. No. Okay. One more thing before we take the break. It seems Chelsea, that club I used to formerly love, it's for sale and they've selected, yeah, shortlisted yeah. some bids and all of that. But what's happening? Yes, is that it looks like Roman Abramovich may not live to sell that club. Man, <laughs> he is being poisoned. Are you laughing? He's being poisoned along with Ukrainian people just to try and bring peace to the world. Wow! Like that's what's the anthrax in his morning coffee? <laughs> anthrax? <laughs> what are you saying? What What will be interesting is to find out what who's the nominee. Like, do they have the ownership papers? Like, India, the is are there like nominee? Yeah. Name, like, have, you imagine like, suddenly <laughs> Pramod Mahajan still owns Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> like what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> That guy died way before. Is he one of the? Is Roman Abramovich one of the billionaires to come out of that death? Uh, anyway, I think we should take a break right now. Yeah. And after the break, let's talk a little about Premier League, guys. It's back after like 
I don't know, after a month or something. So, let's just see what's going on in the Premier League. Stay tuned to Football Twaddle. Hey everybody, it's been another great week on the IVM Podcast Network. On Think Fast, which is invited me to talk about the evolution of the audio industry. And besides the audio industry, we talked about a whole bunch of other things like the Zomato Blinkett potential merger, the Mumbai 2050 climate plan, and a whole bunch of other things. Fun episode, do check that out. On Press Decode, Zara Vakta, Prafula, and Nivedita discuss the accuracy of the Kashmir files and associated movie politics. On The Longest Constitution, Priya examines the issue of livelihood along with why women aren't a part of parliament. On Say No to Drama, Chetna explains why you should celebrate filing your income tax rather than feeling bad about it. And on All Things Policy, the Takshashila folk discuss India's reserves of oil in light of the oil supply shock created by the Russia-Ukraine war. Do follow us on social media. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. And don't forget to rate us on any of the platforms you're listening to us on. Also, remember, we're on YouTube. You can check us out on ivmpodcast.com slash YouTube and get a list of all the YouTube channels we have active at this point. I'd also like to make a quick note that we're doing a small listener survey and it would really help us if you could fill that out. You can go to ivmpodcast.com slash survey. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors this week, SBI Life Insurance and India Water Portal. Thank you so much for making this possible. All right. Welcome back to Football Portal. Yes, I am looking through the Premier League fixtures and it Mm. starts. There's some tasty ones. United versus Leicester City. Yes. So United is playing football after how long? Yeah, almost a month, three three weeks. So, uh, because of the United not playing FA Cup, they were they didn't play that weekend plus two weeks of international break. And yeah, so uh, I mean, what I hope happens is what I hope Ralph puts Bruno Fernandez on the right wing because both the goals he scored against uh, North Macedonia. the North Macedonia sort of came from the right. So <laughs> that will be interesting to see. And uh, besides that, apparently there's going to be a big contract. Uh, whatever that end of contract thingy that that is going to come in football, Leicester is going to be a big victim of that. So why? Hopefully, United get to scout a bunch of players from Leicester. Yo, they're going to Newcastle. You can hopefully this, hopefully that. What well, Newcastle going to pick? Maybe Jamie Vardy. Maybe Madison. some of the better players. We want Madison. Yeah, but, 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 no, no. But right now, even like the fifth choice of Newcastle players are. Improve Manchester United right now. That's oh, so you're saying that you hope Leicester perform well and they beat Manchester United so the top no, of I, contract I, players can. I, come. I hope. I hope uh, someone from Manchester United catch hold of one of the, uh, some of the Leicester players in the dressing room or that tunnel and say, "Bhai, aaja na." Types. That kind of stuff happens. <laughs> what if Leicester player turns back and says, "Will you be there? I, thought, <laughs> I will come." <laughs> but yeah, will I thought you that happens during international break, anyway. Huh? Exactly. Isn't I, it a very common no, thing in internet? There are a bunch of Manchester United players who are right? not going to be there. So, I don't think anybody is playing agent right now. Okay. Um, I mean, oh, that, Arsenal fans have definitely seen pics of Odegaard hanging out with Haaland. So, we know that deal is happening. Wow. <laughs> Where? Even Odegaard is going to Real Madrid. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how, who spoke what. You just know. That way, Obama and Baru is pretty safe. Who will he tell in Gabon team? Bhai, Aja. <laughs> Yeah, he looks like a good striker, man. I think he should join Arsenal. Might do well over. <laughs> yes. Let's see who you know, your joining Villa... clubs. I think it's been crazy. Uh, this guy. So United are moving, offering a job to Ten Hag, right? Van Hal has come up with a statement that I don't think he should be joining United. It's but yeah. he'll call me for advice. I won't advise him. <laughs> <laughs> he'll call <laughs> me himself. I could say bolu na. Dude, Louis Van Hal and his idea of self-importance is amazing. But yeah, yes, is this Ten Hag yeah. thing happening? He's one of the front runners, but since United have wanted Poch since Poch hit puberty, that <laughs> God knows what what's gonna happen there. Oh, so, yeah, and Poch and Leonardo definitely are going to get out of PSG. I think at the end of this season. So, I mean, if uh, all the superstars leave, maybe PSG can go back to being like a. Whatever, like a like a hipster club. Right now they're not. But <laughs> if the owners but yeah, leave, I mean, if the, if the owners leave, they can go back to being a real football club, near bankrupt. No, but nobody wants to be a real football club. Only Louis Van Hal wants like real football clubs to be around. But see, given given that Poch is like a hipster manager, I'm sure like if if Messi goes back to Barca and uh, 
Neymar goes wherever and Mbappe to 100% is going. If all of that happens, then Paris can go back to being uh, a decent a football club, team. A club managed by Pochettino playing whatever that high tempo central football that they play. Yeah, but I don't think that's happening. What you're saying is either Poch goes or Messi, Neymar and Mbappe go. <laughs> so I don't think that's happening. Uh, okay, let's turn a little towards Arsenal because I have, we have our Arsenal boy. Uh, your boy wonder Mikel Arteta is. Just killing it, Baru. Are you not very happy with the choices you you and your club have made? Yeah, it is working pretty well, at least uh, with how these kids are performing once again. Smithrow from the bench, Saka on the pitch. And uh, I saw this stat the other day that <laughs> the last time Arsenal were top four was when Arteta played his last season for the club. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been second long. last season, so I think. Oh, okay. I was thinking 2008 for some reason. Arteta's last season was just like four or five years ago. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> oh, so he's bringing back the glory days. You think that now that even international break is over, over the next two months, Arsenal will like finish in top four? It's possible. It's pretty possible with the way they're, they're playing right now. I think they have only two big games left, which is United and uh, Chelsea. Yeah. Apart from that, they don't seem like... I mean, looking at how they've been playing, these are the games that they are winning easily now. It's just the top four uh, guys who, including United, that they are unable to usually win against. Wow. So let's see. I think top four is wow. on the charts for us. Right? Dude, the optimism, yes. And they've also, they've also <laughs> learned the black magic of uh, falling sick right before international breaks. So I think <laughs> this is going to be well for the squad. We've got Ramsdale, we've got Saka, we've got Martinelli. But Martinelli did play eventually. Mm-hmm. So. All right. Okay. So, let's just do this. Uh, yes, I'm assuming you're watching uh, your game of the week is United-Leicester. Yeah. Uh, it's about time I watch a United game. So. And what's, what's, the, what's the score going to be? <laughs> I'm going for a thrilling 3-2 win for Manchester United. Oh, I'm going for a 3-3 draw. Oh, close enough. <laughs> yes. Because both the defences suck. And Harry Maguire mm-hmm. is now what do you call, emotionally scarred after all the booing. So, I think that's the opening for James Madison and Jamie Wadi. All right, Baru, what game are you going to be watching? Um, Well, it's going to be a double London derby weekend (laughs) with Chelsea, Brentford and Arsenal, Crystal Palace. So, I think I'll be watching both games in parallel. Yo, Not in parallel. Wow. Like, the man who stopped watching football now watch is watching two games in parallel. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> Spread across three days. Yeah. <laughs> so why are you watching it in parallel? Wait, let me check. You are Chelsea Brentford is Saturday, 7 30 pm, and Crystal Palace <laughs> Arsenal is Monday night. <laughs> why are you watching these games in parallel, my dear friend? I obviously won't be watching it live, no. Bad me cut it. What the highlights to get? <laughs> oh, <laughs> fine, what's your prediction? <laughs> Crystal Palace, Arsenal. Come on, give Vieira a win. No, no. He already got his win this weekend by getting added to the Hall of Fame. So, I think Arsenal is going to take this one with a clean sheet. Like, Oh, we have to talk about this Hall of Fame thing. Gary Neville is now like in the Premier League Hall of Fame. No, not yet. He's been like nominated for voting. But he's been nominated for voting. So, he's not even good enough to no, vote for all of it. Like, for the votes. Yeah. Oh, that way. Alright. So, what's the score going to be? Crystal Palace, Arsenal. 2-0 to Arsenal in that. Chelsea, Brentford. I think Brentford is going to win 1-0. One, one. You can only win 1-0. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Brentford are going to win 1-0 and donate $1 million to Chelsea for the club mm. operations. For the pensioners. <laughs> Yeah, for like the D, what do you call? Like they need to give some medicine to Abram, which dude needs to be alive to sell that club. Anyway, I'm going Dolo to anyway, Dolo. I'm going to watch <laughs> Dolo 650. <laughs> Imagine Abram is running around in Ukraine. Rem Desivir Milega, Rem Desivir. All right, I'll be watching Tottenham versus Newcastle. It's high time when our club, Newcastle, has not played for a month. I think they've lost all the momentum <laughs> and they're just right. so lethargic they were going to be. But I am hoping for a 2 1 Newcastle victory. Goal for Chris Come Wood on. and Ryan Fraser. And while yes. talking of Newcastle, did you see the stats of Bruno Gumares? Yes, for in the eight yeah. minutes he was on the pitch. Some insane stats. Some insane. insane. Stats. I'm right. sure Baru is not part of our 
time side warrior group so let me tell him so baru here's the stats bruno gumarish in just 8 minutes against chile 18 touches one assist 11 passes 85% pass accuracy one chance created one dribble successful <laughs> two ground duels and one foul suffered just in 8 minutes <laughs> now if you extrapolate this for a goal no if you ex- no, he didn't but if you extrapolate this over 90 minutes this is how good bruno is right he will just add a zero at the end of his <laughs> i mean not 8 minutes na 90 uh, is so more than 10 minutes is given for like grace period of like he will have 11 assists if he plays a full match <laughs> <laughs> for brazil and he will have 12 fouls suffered he is that fucking good <laughs> <laughs> oh man the scouting network just killed it out of the park all we need bruno is to play 90 <laughs> minutes and newcastle is scoring 12 goals a game this is not ex- excluding the assists of saint maximin who will be like six more <laughs> <laughs> so we we newcastleians have already assembled a team which can score 20 goals if their yeah. two players just stay on the pitch that's how good this why are you not coming to the time side baru i've been in the time side since sherer was there but once he left i just got disillusioned <laughs> with the deficiencies of of the, the club play. yeah but now i've told you so many good stats about our current players don't you think it's high time you came back home yeah i've already applied for the the trademark rights of mumbai jodies oh. so we do the five have you <laughs> or are you just yeah, saying yeah. it let's yeah, just no. do it na let's apply <laughs> Mumbai Jody. <laughs> Let's apply for trademark. <laughs> we are not trademark, and then yeah. we'll sell it for like hundred thousand dollars when the club actually finds Mumbai Jodies. <laughs> All right. On that note, ah, uh, I am seeing you boys tomorrow in the evening for some fun and frolic activities. So nice. yes, see you tomorrow. All right. See you. Bye-bye. Baru, please get well bye-bye. and see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye. <laughs> okay. Bye. Since. All right. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye. We face a hundred dilemmas every day while raising our children and nurturing our families. Why not let science help us make informed decisions to solve our dilemmas? Hi, I'm Devi Shobha and I'm Meghna. We host Big Talk about Tiny Humans, where we will help you unpack challenges around parenting and your child's development. And more importantly, we will equip you with research-backed strategies that you can readily act on. Tune in to our podcast every Wednesday on the IBM Podcasts app, website or your favorite podcast platforms. Hum mahilaye roz ke kamon mein bahut vyast rehti hain aur ho bhi kyun na kaam, padhai aur zimmedariyan sabhi puri karni zaruri hain. Par in sab ke beech hum jeevan ke ek bahut hi zaruri pehlu ko nazar andaaz kar deti hain. Finance इसीलिए हम आपके लिए लेकर आए हैं एस लाइफ प्रस्तुत एक चुस्की फाइनेंस महिलाओं द्वारा महिलाओं के लिए बनाया गया पॉडकास्ट यहाँ मैं प्रियंका आचार्य आपकी होस्ट आपके साथ शेयर करूंगी कि किस तरह आप अपने फाइनेंसेस को बहुत आसानी से संभाल सकती हैं और फाइनेंशियली इंडिपेंडेंट बन सकती है अपने चौदह वर्षो का अनुभव लिए मैं आ रही हूँ हिंदी और अन्य सात भाषाओं में हर मंगलवार नए एपिसोड्स के साथ आई वी एम पॉडकास्ट नेटवर्क और अन्य चर्चित पॉडकास्ट प्लेटफॉर्म्स पर।